God, who has begun a good work, is going to complete it. You heard that over and over again this morning. And he's going to send for it, even the spirit and power of Elijah. When a young preacher, kneeling before the Lord, I can remember the place of Peterborough, when the Lord said, I have chosen you, and uh, you will have an anointing, even as my servant Ezekiel. In a prophetic anointing, I, I got excited. It's always equal until I read the book. Then I said, well, I don't think I like that one. Though. You read the book of Ezekiel, what he went through. And they said, I spoke the word of God, and they would not believe. They mocked him, and they did everything against him, spit the space, and they, and they railed upon him and the whole thing. And I said, that doesn't sound like a, a happy ministry. But the word of the Lord went forth from his lips. And he said, I am called of God, regardless if they receive or not, their blood will not be upon my hands. We are so afraid today in our churches to get into the pulpit and to preach the word of God because we're afraid we're going to offend the people. And so the people go on doing all what they want, going their own way, doing their own thing, and God is not in the midst of them. It is time that we hear again the pure, clear, unadulterated word of God. And that there will be servants of the Lord who will not fear the faces of men and women. Who will not even slow down for their accusations and the pointing of finger and coming against them. For they'll stand in the glory of God. Who can come and deny to those that the glory will be so intense upon them that they'll fall backward because of the presence of God coming through them. Hallelujah. So be encouraged. So the word of the Lord came. And I, I heard this word, Thou shalt go forth before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to get ready a people prepared for the Lord. The Lord said, This will not be done by yourself. The same spirit that was upon Elijah, I will put upon you. You will go forth to speak my word. You will turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children. And the disobedient, which would mean the disobedient children, to the wisdom of the just, there's going to be such a shaking in that situation. And we realize that the absentee father that is now, not only in North America, in many parts of the world, fathers are not there. There's no stability. Father is to represent Father God. There's to be stability. There's to be provision. There's to be protection. Where are our fathers? They're too busy making their money. They're too busy enjoying their own pleasure. They're too busy in, in getting a better position in the workforce. And so all these things are causing the families to suffer. God says it will begin in the house of God where fathers and men, thank God for those promise keepers. That has been a powerful movement to call fathers back again, to promise before God that they will be faithful husbands, that they will be faithful fathers, and they will stand in the position to represent God in their family. There's a lack, and this is a story that I believe God is wanting to stir again, that fathers will again be in the place where he wants them to be. That as a result, the disobedient children will see the strength of the father and be again turned again unto God. And by this, get ready and people prepared for the Lord. How can we get ready of people? It's very clear. Even in the last book of the Old Testament, in Malachi, this is the word that was going to begin the kingdom of God, the turning of the hearts of the fathers to their children, and their children back unto the fathers. And out of that will come a strength that will bring life again back into the home, because we're trying to let the church run the home. The home should already be a well-established place where God dwells. Where the word of the Lord yes. is honored. Because now they, they want our children, we, now that we even have Sunday school, we used to have Sunday school where they hear the word of God. Uh, 
Now they have children's ministry, thank God for all those. But a lot of the parents have turned it over to the church to deal with their children. No, no, fathers in the home, deal with your children. Deal with the righteous way of helping your wife. Establish a godly home. And godly families will cause there to be a godly church. You cannot bring together in an hour's morning service things that will be, uh, you know, strong enough to change the home. Because now they've got all these services, they whip you in for, for a fast, bouncy music, and then after that they give you a little power talk that maybe got out of a book, and then they give you a benediction and help you go. It, it's, there is no presence of God, there is no honor of the Holy Spirit, there are no gifts and operation. We are in a sad situation, but God sees the desire of the hearts of His people, and we say, comfort you, my people. Be encouraged because God is going to honor those who have honored Him in waiting upon Him for the time of the glory is at hand. He will have people. He will have places. There will be those who are out of the Lord. And isn't it amazing that the glory can show up in this, this lovely room? Because it has nothing to do with brick and mortar. We carry the glory in here. We are the bearers of the glory. And God wants you to reveal His presence. And you can be with somebody, even five minutes if something happens. When we went into our neighborhood in Bradford, I said, we're going to bring the glory to our neighborhood. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. We are responsible. We were bringing the glory into our condo building before we set up the Bible study. We had Bible studies every week and invited people from the condo to come and they came. Like to see more and more done, but still it was a witness. And the presence of God would go out now in our neighborhood. And so they were watching. So the neighbor said to me, to the left, he said, I hear you're a pastor. You're a father. I said, I'm father, grandfather too. But I said, I, I just, yeah, I have done ministry. And I said, I don't have a church right now, but we travel. Our son's here, pastor in Bradford. We're helping out, just sharing so he got into the sauce a little bit one night and he saw me come out and he called me over and he said, uh, I don't know if I believe anymore. He said, if there's God or what I should believe. And I said, well, Jim, I'm not going to heaven without you, so you better hurry and get ready. And he, it jarred him. It shook him to realize. And I, I gave him without being preaching. Let him know that I loved him enough that I wanted him to go to heaven with me that he's going to have a change in his life. And we're claiming that across the street. They said to the one next to us, oh, don't bother with her. She's miserable. She causes trouble in the neighborhood. I said to my wife, we're going to win her. We're going to win her to Jesus. Little Polish baby. And so uh, we were out, she's out doing her gardening. So I, I got talking to her and I was raving about her flowers. She had beautiful gardens and about what I should do in our flower garden. And she said, well, don't worry about my flower. I've got so much we could, I can share. I said to my wife, she's not sounds pretty good. She's not nasty like they're saying. You gotta know how to love people. We had a situation for the party, we had cake and sandwiches left over. I said to my wife, wrap up some, I'm going to take it to the neighbor lady. Went over, well, she was so delighted. How many know we can carry the glory of God without preaching and pointing a finger at it? You know, how do we glorify God? And I was reading that in Isaiah 58, and let me conclude with that this morning. Oh, well, I wanted to go back to Elijah and what he's going to bring down fire. The Holy Ghost fire. But uh, in Isaiah 15, isn't this the fast? Yeah, so what fast? Yeah. To take care of the hungry. Yes. To clothe the naked. Yeah. To be kind to those who are destitute. We, we think to get religious and to have the glory that it's going to be all just, you know, singing, shouting, and you no, know, it's practical. Yeah. When you have the glory of God, it's going to make you be able to relate to people. Yes. It's not going to make you feel that you're better than they are. They're going to long for what you have. Yes. They're not going to feel uncomfortable and say, we don't want you. They want to be drawn. There's something magnetic about the glory. They don't know how to describe it. 
They don't know how to relate to it, but they belong for it because it's God. It's God's presence being revealed. Who doesn't want God? We have so many gods out there, they're confused. Yeah. Well, they need to see the reality of the true God. Yes, yes. I said to a young Muslim, boy, he was reading about the Koran and about reading it, and I said, I don't see the word love in any of it, from the front to the back, not even mentioned once love. And I said, I can show you in the Bible over and over again, it says God is love. Not only God gives love, God is love. That's his character. That's his nature. God not only gives love, he is love. He's not just one, even though he's great, the creator, the mighty one, and as we were singing, but he is a God of mercy, God of grace, God of love. People need to see this, and if we can emanate the glory of God, people will be drawn. Because they don't want religion. How many know people are tired of religion? They see the paralyzing, devastating influence that religion can have. They want reality. So if you can bring them the love of God, the power of God, the grace of God, and even bring them the miracle power of God, because the glory of God has miracle power. Yes. Yes. You can go down the corridor of uh, the Walmart or the store you're in or Sears River and just begin to minister. I take people by the hand in, in business places. They are not well. I get not well. Let's just pray God to touch it. I don't close my eyes. I don't make them feel. I don't cough and puff and get all going and seem to scare the wits out of them. No, I just say, now, dear Lord, this dear one I just met just needs a healing. Needs a miracle. Oh, they say, oh, I felt something. He said, that, yeah, that's the power of God. They won't forget that. You may never see them again, it may be miles away. We're to be carers of the glory. We're to be dispensers of the grace of God. We're to release the word of the Lord. If the church would arise to this, instead of going to church to see what blessing they can get, or what who they can see, but going there to say we're going to come together to manifest the corporate glory of God in worship. And to declare the greatness of Jesus and to go up from there and we can impact nations for the glory of God. And the Lord said, for those who will do this, my glory will be upon them. And when I was reading this again last night, the Lord is going to call you a repair of the breach and a restore of paths to dwell. In that verse 12 of that 58th chapter, you're called to be a restorer and a repair. As remnant people of the glory of God, and as you are a restorer of paths to dwell in and a repair of the breach, there's there is a hole in the wall, and the enemies be getting in and share this in Milton. God's looking for a man to stand in the gap. He's looking for a woman who will say, you can count on me. We are to be repairers, not destroyers. Repairs. People are devastated. Their lives are shattered. We're living in a devastated society. We are, have the ability in the Spirit of God to repair the breach. Where there's been brokenness, bring healing. And as you bring a repairing of the breach, then you can restore the person back to their purpose and calling in God. Yes. God has a purpose for your life. Yes. You are to be a repairer and a restorer of the breach. And my time is over, but isn't it good that we can just share the good things of God? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm looking at the remnant. I'm looking at those who God has chosen in this hour. I wonder who could sing, Let God and the glory arise and the joy shine. Uh, oh, I'm going to keep in touch with this group. Uh, Brother Praveen, thank you. And uh, I see, where's the keeper man? Yeah, the keeper. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Oh, yes. I want us to, I want you to experience before. Brother Praveen, come. Um, the glory of the Lord shines upon us. Amen. And we're going to give back nations. Praise the Lord. Out of this, we don't know where all of We're wondering what's going to happen. Uh, we've got some ministry plans, all excited about what God's going to do because the glory of the Lord 
But there's something so pure about the Lord. How many know there's something? You don't have to work it up. You don't have to dress it up. The glory is sufficient in itself to be everything man, man needs. In the glory there's deliverance. In the glory there's yes, salvation. Amen. In the glory there's healing. Yes, Everything we need is in the glory because it's the presence of God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand together. Praise the Lord.